Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Our story is titled, The Richest Man in the Air Force. Every one of us lives in a well-defined world. We have our place, we're part of something. But what happens when our own little world falls apart? How do we find our place in a new one? That's something Woodrow Carter has to learn. Our first act curtain rises in just a moment. But first, announcing new opportunities for former servicemen in the U.S. Air Force. If you're a veteran of any service and are seriously interested in a brighter future, you should take a look at the Air Force Prior Service Program. You'll find that your skills and experience acquired in the armed forces can bring immediate rewards in the Air Force. If you qualify in one of the many needed categories, you can enlist in an appropriate grade immediately and enjoy a 30-day paid delay in reporting if requested. And if you don't have a currently usable skill, you can take an aptitude test before enlisting, which, if you qualify, will guarantee the finest technical training. Today's airmen receive generous pay raises, increased bonuses and allowances, and extended retirement benefits. This is just part of the picture. See your local Air Force recruiter for all the facts. There is no obligation. Find out why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, The Richest Man in the Air Force. There are some people who have no problems at all. There are some people for whom the world is always a beautiful place, or so it seems. Now take that car gliding along the boulevard, that long, low, sleek, imported convertible. It's called a Hockley Cruiser custom made in Great Britain. With all the extras, it comes to nine or maybe $10,000. And as for the young fellow who's driving it, he can well afford it. He could probably afford seven of them, one for every day in the week. Who is he? Say, don't you ever look at the pictures in the papers? That's 19-year-old Woody Carter, whose dad has five or $10 million, more or less. Oh, but wait, let's not lose that car. It's going to stop at that mansion up the street. See, he's turning into the driveway and going up to the front door. A butler opens the door and Woody enters the house. He walks down a long, wide hall and into a cheerful, oak-paneled room, his father's study. Hello, Dad. Woody, good to see you. How was school? All right, I guess. Well, I heard you were a high scorer on the basketball yeah, team. I was hoping you'd get to see a couple of the games. Well, you know how it's been, Woody. Oh, except for our trip, Dad, I stopped off at Blakely's and bought a brand new rifle. Will you see it? When are we leaving for the lodge? Oh, uh, uh, sit down for a minute, son. Oh, boy, just think a whole week hunting and fishing in the mountains. Dad, I can't remember the last time we spent a week together. Uh, Woody, I'm afraid the trip will have to be postponed. Oh, but, I Dad... know, I know, son. I was looking forward to it myself. But I have to fly to Paris tomorrow morning. Something's come up. I guess something always comes up, doesn't it, Dan? Well, you shouldn't have said that, Woody, but, well, I suppose it happens to be true. But, son, I'm not a free agent. There are so many people who depend on me, and especially right now. Uh, certain situations are quite complicated. Oh, I understand. Now, I know that. you've been alone quite a bit, especially since we lost Mother. But I've been alone, too. It's just the way things work out, Woody. Well, at least you're not leaving till tomorrow. Why don't we do something tonight? Uh, could we have dinner, maybe? Get tickets to a show? Well, you see, I had to call a meeting of the board. As a matter of fact, I'm due there just about now. I'll be back around midnight. Maybe if you're up, we can chat for a while. Sure. Hey, look, uh, this is your vacation time anyhow. Why don't you fly over to the Riviera? I'll try to break away from Paris for a day or two and join you at the beach. Well, Dad, I, I don't think that would work out. 
Maybe I can collect a few of my friends, and we'll go up to the lodge for some fishing. Sure, sure. Well, I'll see you later. Good night. Good night, Dad. Oh, uh, Woody, I know this isn't the first time I've said this, but, uh, well, I'm in a very complicated position business-wise just now. But things will straighten out, and you'll see. We're going to spend lots of time together. You need any money? No. Well, if you run short, see Henderson. He'll take care of everything. Uh, good night, son. Good night, Dad. Have a good trip. Well, that was in June. In July, you may have seen Woody's picture in the paper. He won a yacht race on Long Island Sound. A few weeks later, he was in Switzerland, mountain climbing in the Alps. A busy life and a pleasant one, although somewhat lonely. Well, let's face it, lots of other people are lonely too. If you have to be lonely, it's certainly better to be rich. And then, in the beginning of September, Woody was in Scotland with some classmates when he receives a transatlantic telephone call from his father. Woody! Dad, where are you? Chicago. I'm just winding up a few things. Say, listen, have you got time to spend a few days with your old man before you go back to school? Sure. Then grab a plane out of there tomorrow. We'll go up to the lodge, just the two of us. Dad, I'm going to make a reservation right now. Have a good trip, boy. Bye, Dad. And listen, Woody, this time I promise you, Nothing's going to come up. But this was to be like all the other times. Something did come up. Something no one could foresee. And now for news on the national scene. One of America's most colorful men of finance was killed today in Chicago when the taxi cab in which he was a passenger was sideswiped by a truck. Death came instantly to Franklin Jerome Carter, 57, who was on his way to the airport to board a plane for New York. Both the driver of the truck and the cab driver are in the hospital. Uh, come in, my boy. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. <clears throat> Woodrow, uh, I've known you too long to beat about the bush. What I've got to say to you is best said at once and directly. Are you aware of your present position? Well, I, I hadn't thought much about it. According to the papers, Dad left an estate of around uh, five million. I don't know anything about business now, though I do plan to take some courses and learn. And I want you to continue with the administration. That is, if you're willing. I would be willing, my boy, except there isn't anything to administer. Woodrow, your father died broke. His entire estate won't be enough to cover his obligations. Well, well, I don't understand. Father always had so much money. Yes, yes, he had money, but never quite as much as has been supposed. He was a remarkable man, your father, a unique personality. His entire financial life consisted of a fantastic series of ups and downs. Unfortunately, he died suddenly during a down period. Everything he had was tied up in his latest venture. And had he lived, he could have recouped and come back, as he did so often in the past. You see, his greatest assets consisted of his ability to inspire confidence and raise fresh capital. But, sir, the newspapers said... Yes, he Woodrow, I know, I know. But what must remain a secret now is that the estate must be liquidated to back his commitments and pay his debts. I'm afraid there will be... Nothing left. Well, I, I see. Now, I realize this is a bitter pill, Woodrow, but I don't know of any way to sugarcoat it. But so much for business. Now, your dad was my best friend, and he had other good friends, too. So many of us have reason to be grateful to him. And we'd like to look after you, Woodrow. Now, I, I'd like you to make your home at my place while you finish your education. And then we're planning something very interesting for you when you graduate. Charity? Oh, no, 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 of course not, Woody. You and I have been quite close over the years, perhaps even closer than you've been with your dad. Oh, I know that, sir, and I, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, I, I think I'd like to be alone for a while. Yes, I, I understand. I know everything will work out. Just an hour ago, Woody Carter had given a cab driver a $2 tip. The elevator starter had greeted him deferentially and pointed him out as that lucky millionaire kid. But that was an hour ago. 
an hour ago when he was a member in good standing of that fabulous upper world where every day is Christmas and every night is New Year's Eve. Now he's fallen out of that world. Now he walks aimlessly along the street trying to collect his thoughts. He's sure of only one thing, the only part of his father's legacy that's left to him, his pride. He knows only that he will not live on the charity and goodwill of his father's old friend. No matter how good their intentions or sincere their purpose, he cannot spend the rest of his life as a guest in their world. Suddenly he becomes aware of large, brilliantly colored posters before his eyes. Certain words stand out in large, bold type. Opportunity, advancement, security. These were words that never held any importance for him before, but now he looks at them in fascination. He's standing in front of a glass enclosed booth. Inside the booth, a man sits behind a desk. He wears an Air Force uniform with a bewildering array of stripes and decorations. The man sees Woody and gives him a friendly smile. And Woody feels the need to talk to someone, anyone. And this sergeant has the look of a man who could be easy to talk to. Security, opportunity, and advancement. I, I guess I'm interested. Where do I sign? Well, it's a little more than that. It's also responsibility. Um, uh, when did you decide to join the Air Force? Two minutes ago. Well, what I meant was, how long have you been thinking about it? Over the past two minutes. Uh, look, I isn't it your job to get fellows to enlist? Uh, here I am, that's all. Well, that isn't really all. You should know what you're getting into. You should know more about the Air Force and how you could fit in. We have a lot of jobs. Now, uh, what are some of your interests? What would you like to do? It's funny. I never had to think about anything like that until just now. Uh, I, I, I guess I never had any real interests. What's your name? Uh, Woodrow Carter. I thought I'd seen you somewhere before. Your picture was in the paper a couple of weeks ago. Say, are you serious about this? Why? You mean I don't have the right to join the Air Force? No, no, slow down, son. Of course you have the right. I'm just a little bit curious, that's all. And you don't even have to satisfy my curiosity if you don't want to. I'll tell you this much. The Air Force is going to be a different life than the one you're used to. A great many things that may have been important to you before aren't going to count for much right Thanks, now. Thanks, Sergeant. I'm aware of that. Now, now, what do I sign? Where do I sign it? And when am I in? Look, son, the Air Force has been my whole life. I like my job. Sure, I want to encourage men to enlist. The more recruits I can get, the better I like it. But I'd like to get fellows who are really going to make it, who are going to better themselves in the Air Force. You don't just join the Air Force on a whim. Joining up isn't like passing a shop window and seeing a tie that you'd like. Look, do us both a favor, hmm? Here's some pamphlets. Read them through, ask me questions, and think about this thing. Sergeant, are you trying to discourage me? No, not at all. I've thought about it. I'm your man. Okay, Carter. You definitely are our man. I'm convinced you're physically fit. As for intelligence, you probably rank among the top. Now, you take the papers home, look them over, and sign them. Right. I'll be back here first thing tomorrow morning. And thanks, Sergeant. Uh, Carter, I'd like to wish you the best of luck. Mm. Millie, it's me. I'll be a little late. Oh, say, <laughs> you'll never guess who was just in here. No, no, now quit wasting time, I'll tell you. Woodrow Carter. You know Woodrow Carter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's enlisting in the Air Force. You know, he appears to be a nice young fella. But there's something bothering that boy. I can't put my finger on it, but he seems to be having some kind of trouble. Now, what do you mean, what kind of trouble can a millionaire have? They're people just like everybody else. Anyhow, I sure hope this boy makes it. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. We'll return for the second act in just a moment. But first, prior servicemen, listen to this. They took the blue from the skies and the pretty girl's eyes and the touch of old glory.
Yes, the men who proudly wear Air Force Blue. And if you're a qualified veteran, with one of the many vital skills needed now in the Air Force, an enlistment may win you higher pay and a better grade than you realize. Check into the new opportunities available now. Re-enlistment bonuses are bigger than ever. There's a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments. And these are only a few of the reasons why you're better off in... The U.S. Air Force Blue! And now for the second act of the Proudly We Hail production, The Richest Man in the Air Force. Hey, Carter! Hey, Carter, come here, will you? Look at that bunk. Oh, what's the matter with it? You should have brought your butler along with you. I realize that the great Woodrow Carter never had to make a bed before, but... Oh, lay off him, will you, Andy? Listen, he's ruining the whole flight. On account of him, we won't pass inspection. Carter, I realize you're only slumming down Andy, here, but... I'm sorry. I'll make the bunk again. Look, let it go for now. I come in to tell you there's a girl outside who wants to talk to you. She's a reporter. Well, I don't want to talk to any reporters. Uh, tell her I'm busy, will you, Jack? You tell her. All right. It gives me a stiff pain. That guy thinks he's better than anybody else. Why? Because his old man happened to have dope? Yeah, he seems like a regular enough guy. Uh, Look, remember, a lot of this stuff is new to him. I think he's doing his best. Yeah? Well, he don't impress me at all. And he'd better get on the ball, too. Look, we better straighten out that bunk for him. The sergeant's due almost any minute now. Good. Let Mr. Million Bucks get chewed out. Yeah, except it's gonna reflect on a whole flight. Come on, give me a hand. I hope you haven't been interviewed yet, Mr. Carter. I hope I'm scoring a beat on all the other papers. Well, first, miss, I don't think you call recruits in basic training mister. How do you like it here at Lackland Air Force Base? Uh, look, uh, I'd, I'd rather not talk. I'd rather not be interviewed. I just want to be the same as anybody else. I'm a basic airman, and that's all. Now, if you'll just excuse me... I can assure you that so many people are curious to know why you joined the Air Force. What made you do it? Well, what makes any young fellow join the Air Force? Write down the same reasons for me. But you're not the same as everyone else. Why? Well... I am the same. I want to be considered the same. How does it feel to have to do things for yourself? Things that were always done for you? If you'll excuse me... I have to go back to my barracks and get some of them done. Oh, please, Mr. Carter, I've traveled 1,500 miles to get this interview. Mr. Carter, wait, Mr. Carter. And don't call me Mr. Carter. Tis hut! Flight 37, ready for inspection, sir. At ease. What's your name? Carter, sir. Don't you sweep the dust out from under that bunk, Carter? And you might get a little shine on those shoes. Uh, now you went and ruined it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I bet. Sergeant Smith. Yes, sir? Very good, except for the one man. That's all. There, now you've gone and cost us the inspection pennant. We would have won it if you were on the All board. right, well, now I... quiet down, you guys. The rest of you fellas take off. I want to talk to Carter. I, I, I'm sorry, Sergeant. Well, the rest of the men are kind of angry with you, Carter. I can't say that I blame them. Your performance doesn't do me any good as your tactical instructor either. But let's forget that. Now, do you want to talk? About what? Carter, we're in our third week. You may have enlisted in the Air Force, but you haven't joined it. All right, I realize you never had to make a bed or shine your shoes or keep your clothes straight before. All that was done for you. You never had to put up with anything you didn't like either. You could always drop it or buy something better. You don't know what it is to take orders. Sergeant, you wanted this talk and you're going to get it. Why does everybody hold who I am against me? I just wanted to be treated like everybody else. Well, then act the same as everybody else. I am. You're not. Do you realize you're the only man in my whole flight who hasn't indicated his career field yet? Well, sure, sure, you do all right in class. Why not? You've had a good, expensive education. But you're not with these fellas. You don't try to make friends. Your whole attitude is that of a guy who doesn't care. 
who doesn't have to care. Well, that's not the way I mean it at all. I, I want to belong. <sighs> Look, I think you're all right, Woody. There's... Well, there's just something blocking you, that's all. All right, clean up and get your stuff in order. Hey, Andy, Jack. Yes, Sarge. What is it, Sarge? About Carter. No. Have any of you fellas ever asked him to join you at the service club for a soda or a game of pool? Who wants to spend time with him? He never gets his nose out of the air long enough, anyhow. Well, try asking him, huh? Is, uh, is that an order, Sarge? I can't give an order like that. It's just a suggestion. All right, Sergeant. We'll try it. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, now I have to put up with that guy on my own time, too. Well, we tried. We couldn't find him. <laughs> He's probably out somewhere counting his money. No, he isn't. He came to the club by himself. And look, he's hmm? dancing with that girl in the comp center you had your eye on. Well, now, how do you like that? Now he's trying to steal my girl. Your girl? What'd you do, talk to her once? I think I'll cut in. Uh, pardon me, cutting in? Oh, sorry. I'm taken for this dance. Oh. Oh, what a fool I was to think I could compete with a millionaire. I guess the big thing wrong with me is that my old man had to swing a pick and shovel for a living. The big thing wrong with you was your mouth. Do you want to do something about it? Any time you say. Well, how about right now? Hey, 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 cut it out. Right now, you're going back to the barracks. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to... Look, I see Sergeant Smith over there. Look, if you don't come back with me now before you get into a jam... Okay, okay. All right, Carl. But we have lots of time. You mind if we sit this next one out? Okay. You didn't tell me your name was Carter. Well, you didn't tell me your last name either. I was just as happy to leave it at Jackie and Woody. So you're the famous Carter who's on our base. Are you impressed? Should I be? How do you like the Air Force? Well... You disappointed? I guess so. Why? What did you think it would be like? Well, I didn't think it'd be like this. I haven't been able to make any friends. I just don't seem to get along, that's all. So far. Oh, like you, for instance. And for about a half hour, you didn't know who I was. And I think we had fun, didn't we? Well, now, everything seems to be different. Well, no. It's true I didn't know who you were, but I knew you were different from the other fellas. How? I don't know. You seem to hold back, as if everything that's going on really doesn't matter. My tactical instructor said something like that, too. Well, what is it? I don't know. Well, you have to start out fresh if you want to be really in this Air Force all the way. I guess all your life things were handed to you. It wasn't your fault. You, you were considered somebody special. Not the same as everyone else. Now you... You have to unlearn all that. Can't happen overnight. It's going to take time. <laughs> Say... You can tell a lot about a fellow just by talking to him for a half hour. No, not really. There's one thing I can't understand, and that is, why do you feel so sorry for yourself? Do I really give that impression? I'm afraid you do. And what a guy like you should have to feel sorry for himself for is... Well, that's something I just can't figure out. You know something? Neither can I. Let's dance. I've been waiting up for you, Buster. Now do you want to step outside? Sure, let's go. Hey, Good. are you Come guys on. crazy? It has to happen sometime, Jack. Oh, no, Sergeant Smith's due back any minute. And I won't need more than a minute. Come on. You... Hey, hey, cut it out. Hey, cut it out. Hey, cut it out. What's going on in here? Look, Sarge. He's had it coming for a long time. Here's a guy who don't care about the flight or anybody in it. What's it to him if he costs us the inspection pennant? He just doesn't care. Well, you... Now stand still, Carter. Stand still. Let go of me, Sarge. That punch is going to cost you, Carter. I don't, I don't care what it costs me. 
Anybody can say anything he likes about me. Except one thing. Don't say I don't care. I want to tell you guys something. Maybe I've got a lot to learn, but I'm going to learn it. I may have had a lot of things none of the rest of you had. But I never had anything that's doing me any good right now. Now, when I need it. And let's get another thing straight. Maybe you think I have a million bucks. Well, it's not true. I'm broke. I have less than any of you. I joined the Air Force for the same reason the rest of you did. Looking for a career. Now, is everybody happy? Andy, I'd like us to be friends. Can we shake hands? Well, look, Woody, I... I guess the trouble with you was your old man had too much money. And the trouble with me is that <laughs> my old man didn't have enough. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to shake hands. You know, what I was really sore about was Sally. But <laughs> I only went out with her once and... <laughs> well, I mean, I only just talked to her once. Hey, Sarge, look, the whole thing was my no, fault. No, 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 oh, it yes, wasn't. It was. What hey. whole thing? What are you men talking about? Now, everybody turn in. You got a rough day tomorrow. So, Woody, it, uh, it turns out you're not the richest man in the Air Force, huh? Well, I don't know about that, Sergeant. A fellow can be rich in a lot of ways. I may have had money, but I never had anything else. I thought I had a lot of friends. But tonight was the first time I ever earned one. Give me a little time, Sarge. Who knows? When it comes to the important things, I can still wind up being the richest man in the Air Force. When you make an investment, no matter what it is, you want that investment to pay off, right? If you're a former serviceman, you certainly made an important investment in time and energy during your service career. Remember the long hours you spent learning valuable skills? Today, many of these skills are urgently needed by the Air Force. That's why you'll be sitting pretty if you re-enlist now. Your nearest Air Force recruiter will give you a booklet telling all about the new opportunities, new benefits offered to veterans of all services by the liberalized enlistment policy of Uncle Sam's Air Force. It's a fact, veterans, today, and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>